Hello YouTube and welcome to another speed painting video. Today I'm going to show you how to paint up the seven figures from the Cursed City expansion Night Wars in just six hours. Now I'm a big fan of Cursed City when it first came out. My daughter and I had so much fun playing it. We went all the way to the end, beat the final boss fight and slew Redicar the Wolf. It was a long wait but finally Games Workshop came out with the expansion for Cursed City, Night Wars. For 50 US dollars, it obviously didn't come with any miniatures, but I didn't have any problems getting the ones that I needed on my own. I'm not going to go through the blow for blow of how I built them, but I can say that Radikar had the most parts and was a little bit finicky, and the Rat Prince was definitely the most difficult, with a lot of fiddly parts and it was kind of hard to put together. Definitely take your time with that one. Everything else was pretty straightforward. In this video, I will be batch painting all seven models together. And I will try to emulate the style that I used for the Vicros Blitborn in the original box, but still trying something new in the process. With the slap chop technique being the new hotness these days, I tried a slightly different variation using airbrushes. I start out the same way with black primer, but afterwards I use white primer to highlight all the areas that I want to make a little bit lighter. I batch prime all seven models all at once and make sure that I get it into all the deep recesses in order to create the shadow effect. Next, I switch out the white primer and this I lightly dust onto all the models fairly evenly all over. In areas where I want it to look lighter, for instance the skin areas, I apply more white primer. For the Vampire Lord, that meant the face and the shield. Radicar was lightly dusted with white as well and I emphasize the areas such as his face, his hands, his legs, all the areas of exposed skin. I did the same thing with Lady Attica. I made the dress a little bit brighter, also her face and her hands. The Rat Prince was very similar to Annika, so I basically just repeated the process. For the Dire Bats, I wanted the wings to look a little bit brighter compared to the rest of the model. So while I lightly or medium dusted the rest of the model, I applied a lot more white to the webs of the wings. I did that both in the front and in the rear of the wings. Here is the Vampire Lord with varying degrees of white shading. You can see where some of the recesses are a little bit darker on all of these models. I intend for those darker areas to look a little bit more shadowed and the light areas to stand out more. Onward to the contrast paints. In my case, I use Army Painter Speed Paints. Starting with hardened leather, I apply it all over the dire bats to give them that rich brown look. I use the same brown speed paints on the loincloths of Radicar's minions. Any of the models that had brown hair also got this leather brown. Army Painter's Blood Red Speed Paint is a very dark and rich red color that I decided to use on my Vampire Lord's armor. I carried that color over into the Rat Prince's long flowing flamboyant outfit. To make Lady Annika stand out from everyone else, I painted her dress in Hive Dweller Purple. For my Vampire Lord's hair, I use Fire Giant Orange, and I applied it generously to all the strands. Next, I used Grave Lord Grey Speed Paint, and I applied it to all the fur areas on Radhikar's outfit. 
I also used it for Lady Annika's hair. They worked really well on the bats on the Vampire Lord's hair as well. The Rat Prince had a lot of gray areas on all the rat fur that he had around him and also the trailing rat tails. Using just a little bit of High Lord Blue speed paint, I applied it to the Rat Lord's hair. This again is to give him a little bit of differentiation from everyone else. Moving away from speed paints to regular acrylic paint, I switched to gunmetal that I applied to sword blades, maces, and pieces of armor. It's worth noting that while Army Painter's speed paints were quick to put on, they did take some time to dry. So base coating while waiting for the speed paints to dry was actually a really good way of saving time. To make the bases look a little bit different, I used leather brown on all the tree trunk and branches. After the wash, they should look different from the main figures that I used speed paint on. For the rocks or statues on the bases, I use ash gray. What I'm trying to do here is establish a different look for the basic elements compared to the main models themselves. I use fur brown only in one area, on Lady Annika's collar. Greedy Gold is used to paint the crest on the Vampire Lord's shield and also the surrounding periphery of the shield. For everyone else, gold is used on the hilts of the weapons. And in the case of the Red Prince, he also gets a little bit of gold on his breastplate as well as the extremities of his walking stick. Radukar the Beast also gets gold on select areas of his armor, just to make him stand out. I painted Radukar's Goblet of Blood gold as well. I used Dark Stone as my miscellaneous color to cover up any area that's still left unpainted, for instance the Rat Prince pants and sleeves. Skeletal bone is used for, you guessed it, skulls that are all over the model. Finding skulls on Radikar's base was quite the scavenger hunt. You may have noticed that I haven't touched the skin of any of these vampires. There's a reason for that. I am intentionally leaving vampire skin white. I noticed that the bats were looking a little bit monotone, so I took some monster brown and I dry brushed it onto the main bodies of the bats while leaving their wings slightly darker. This gives it a little bit more definition and interest. To recreate the pellet skin that I had on my Vicross Bloodborne, all I do is I apply flesh wash right on top of the white skin areas and this gives the vampires a very pale looking appearance. For anything that I did not use Army Painter's speed paint on, I give those features definition with strong tone wash. Here I'm painting the base features with strong tone and also I've noticed that the wings of the bats needed a little bit more definition so I applied some strong wash in these areas just to differentiate them a little bit from the wing webbing. I use strong tone to wash the weapons and really anything else that is not the palette skin or the speed painted areas. The speed paint or contrast paint acts as not only the base color but also the wash and the highlight. So don't touch them, they've already done their job. Now normally, when I paint fast, I tend to skip the highlighting step. However, I noticed that the hair of the Vampire Lord was really dark. So I used Lava Orange and I applied a light and simple highlight onto them just to make the hair pop. In classic vampire fashion, what a better way to finish everything off than with glistening blood. This color is great because it doesn't need washes and it looks glossy, like blood and I used it on the goblet and hands of Redicar. 
Now, this color makes very good vampire eyes. And also it's easy because all you have to do is just pull it into the sockets like you see here. I used this eye treatment for basically all the models. Also, on the red prints, I made his little cloak more spooky by giving the little rat carcasses red eyes as well. Not to forget, vampires do have fangs. And for fangs, I prefer to use a slightly off-white, in this case, mummy robes. It's not as bright and vibrant as white, but it does give it the whitish appearance. Using a small brush, I apply it under the fangs, the nails, the toenails of all the models. The finishing touch is basing. And like in my previous videos, I've always said that I favored simple material basing at the bottom. Nothing fancy. So what I do is I apply some Elmer's glue onto the base, spread them out evenly with a brush, and then apply the basing material like this to give the models a finished look without wasting too much time. After this point, we're all done. All that's left is a little bit of varnish on the models to keep them safe. But now, they're ready for the tabletop. All you have to do is wait for the expansion to arrive in the mailbox or at your local gaming store. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helps you get your models onto the tabletop faster and defeat the denizens of Ulfenkarn. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell icon so you don't miss future content. Have a great day and I will see you soon.